over to Shreyas to introduce our chief guest speaker, Mr. Mahesh Ravi. Mr. Mahesh Ravi, academic and creative head of Wisdom's Academy of Media and Design, is known for his contributions in the Indian design education scene. And his works and research have been recognized, published, and awarded by international domains like Yahoo, University of Alberta. A warm welcome to our session, sir. May I request you to share a few words? Well, there was a recent study in the US, right? Uh, it said that by 2030, the year 2030, 36 million Americans will uh, lose their jobs to artificial intelligence, right? You all know what is artificial intelligence, I guess. Yes. Right? Yes. You have heard about machine learning, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. Uh, it, it's it's the machines or the computers are actually learning from the patterns that we have already created, from the designs that we have already created, from uh, the art that we have already created. And it can produce new design solutions, right? Very functional solutions by then, so without any human, um, you know, uh, contribution there. So a lot of industries are going to get affected. The transportation industry, um, you know, it, will be, it can be fully automated. Construction industry can be fully automated. Health industry, entertainment, design also will get affected um, because they can, the AI can actually create uh, really interesting designs, right? Which is already there, but by 2030, they are saying that entirely it is going to shift to artificial intelligence. So what will we have, right? We will be left with something called creativity, right? That is something that the machine cannot acquire yet, right? You know what is creativity, right? What What do you mean by creativity? Can you tell me or can you define creativity for me? Um, creativity would be like things from your own knowledge. Okay. Something innovative. So something your imagination. Imagination. Yeah. something that is out of the box or beyond right. someone's reach. Yeah, exactly. something that, exactly. that you cannot, that something only certain people like something, uh, something that's that innovative. That you... Very good, very good. Yeah, it, it's the ability to produce something unique, right? Make something, um, something you know, from, from scratch or um, connect existing things which are already there and make it into a new thing, right? Uh, to give it a new function. So it's all about being new. It's all about being innovative. The things that you have said exactly, right? It's all about thinking out of the box and all that. Thinking out of the box or coming with something uh, from, from, you know, um, air, thin, from thin air, it's not possible for a machine yet, right? So that's something that we have. And that is our upper hand over all these, the future, if you have to be, future proof, right? We have to, um, you know, we know about all these machines and we have to be at the top of our game. Creativity is one thing that we have to focus on, right? And uh, it, see, it's basically creativity is a function of knowledge, imagination, and evaluation, right? Which is not exactly a machine can do. Machine can have knowledge, right? The things that you know. Imagination is something that a machine cannot process, right? That's something that is with us. We can imagine things. We can think uh, of possible scenarios. We can think of fantasy. We can think of anything that we want. That is our power, right? And we can evaluate it. We can actually think that if I take my knowledge and if I add it to my imagination, right? And the solution that I make, will it work or will it solve the problem? That is evaluation, right? You can definitely do that. So creativity is a function of knowledge, imagination, and evaluation. And what I wanted to say here, right, for all of you, because I've been um, uh, here with you, I was discussing with you, and I've heard a lot of fresh ideas, a lot of uh, interesting, uh, you know, uh, thoughts, and I saw a lot of passion and energy in design, right? So a couple of tips to, to you know, there are certain conditions for building your creativity, right? And I know that you're you're very creative right now, but you have to maintain that. You have to actually uh, keep that going, uh, even when you are actually going into higher classes and all that. So what exactly do you need to um, build creativity or to, to uh, you know, nurture your creativity, right? You basically need space. You need some freedom, right? You need some freedom. That is called space, right? You, you have some space where you can actually, you can work, you can think, right? Without interruptions, without any sort of interruptions. How many of you do use a smartphone right now? Okay. Me. Yes. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a smartphone, but you are constantly seen in a, um, in currently, right? With everything being converted online, we are getting notifications, right? I mean, Whenever we are working on something, we will be bombarded with notifications. Notifications is coming from everywhere. Even now when I'm attending this meeting, I'm getting a lot of text messages on my phone, right? So this will keep happening. So we cannot concentrate on anything, right? That is where we are, we are not given the freedom of space, right? If we need to think, if we need to be more creative, we need to set up that space. You need to be distraction free. You need to be you know, in a space where you are just alone with your thoughts. You have to find some space for you, right? Then there you need time. 
you need time for good ideas. You need some time for yourself to come up with ideas of your own, right? This can be good ideas. This can be really, really bad ideas, which is also fine. You can actually think of bad ideas so that, you know, um, you are getting it out of your system, right? You think of a lot of bad ideas and it's out of your system. And then you are, you are left with a lot of good ideas. You can definitely focus on those good ideas. So, but you need time for that. You need to find time for yourself to come up with good ideas. You need confidence, which I'm pretty sure all of you are confident, right? You believe in yourself. You have that sort of belief that I can do it. I can come up with a solution. I can, whenever you hear a design problem, you know that I can do it, right? You can come up with that. So that's really, really important. Another thing that you need is exposure, right? Exposure to the things which are happening currently in you, in your world. I mean, in around you, what is happening right now? You know that the COVID is happening. That is uh, affecting a lot of our um, design, um, you know, architecture, everything. It is it's impacting all the industries out there. You should also know the new technological developments out there. Do you know what is NFT? Anybody know what is NFT? Uh, no sir. No. <laughs> Nobody. No, Nobody sir. had heard about it. Okay, and, and, NFT is something, it's, it's a new cryptocurrency. Do you know what is cryptocurrency? Yes, uh, it's a non-fungible -fun token. Exactly, non-fungible oh, token, right? Oh, so really, really cool. Yeah. Good one, good one. So that is the current happening thing, right? Everyone is after NFT, you know that, right? So instead of cryptocurrency, right, Bitcoins and all that, people can convert their ideas, their designs, and they can put a value on it, right? Which is a revolutionary idea, right? You can actually take a piece of art you can convert that into a non-fungible token so that you know the value of that goes up over the years. So there are people, there are artists who made millions and billions in the last two months from NFT. Right. So you should be knowing all these things, right? What is relevant? What is, what should be you know coming? What is happening? What is a new thing uh, which is happening there? So you need a lot of exposure. The reason why I told you that you need a lot of exposure is that any idea, right? You you know the term idea. What do you mean by idea? An innovation that comes to your brain that is out of the box or uh, a new thought, maybe you want to say a new thought, a new thought, that a new thought which is brain. innovative, a new thought which is let parents try, let basically. parents try. Daddy, try no? You thought it produced <laughs> basically, it's a spark in your brain that allows you to think a thought, it's a thought that allows, yeah, it's a thought, yeah, very good, very good. So, uh, see. An idea, right? When you say an idea, it is always not new. You all said that new, right? New, new is not the right term to actually define. It. It's not an idea doesn't happen to you just just like that, right? It is not like that. It is from your knowledge an idea actually happens. If you don't know anything about anything, will an idea pop into your mind? No, no, right? An idea is a new combination of the existing knowledge that you have. It's a new combination of the existing knowledge that you have already have in your mind. So if you know a couple of things and then, so let's say if you know about NFT, if you know about uh, skills in graphic design and you create a combination of that, you're going to say that, okay, I will create a graphic design and I will convert that into a non-fungible token. That's a new idea. It's a combination of the two, you know, existing knowledge that you had, right? So, so it's like an add-on. It's like an add-on, exactly. See, if you don't know anything, you will not be able to come up with ideas, right? If you have a lot of knowledge, you know about everything, like, you know, whatever is happening, you can actually come out with new combinations. You take one knowledge, you combine it with another knowledge, you get a new idea, right? It will not come out of thin air. I mean, you cannot produce an idea out of nothing, right? You need to have knowledge. So that's the reason I said that you need exposure. Now, the last thing that you need is humor. Do you know what is humor? Uh, basically, mm -hmm. some attempts to make someone laugh. Exactly. Yes, it's yeah. like, uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, it's like you should be humor. It's just provoking yeah. laugh. The sense of humor, right? Yeah, as you said, you need to have that sense of humor. You cannot take everything seriously. It's not going to be like that, right? When you're a designer, you when you're doing uh, a lot of work with creative, uh, you know, thinking and all that, you need to have that sort of humor in your mind. You need to take it easy so that your life is going to be easier, your process is going to be easier, and you can enjoy the, that particular process of happening, right? So as I was saying, you need space, time, confidence, exposure, and humor to uh, build your creativity, right? So make sure that you are actually putting in some time to do this, right? So uh, because creativity is the most precious commodity right now, everything else, machines will actually take over, like in a Terminator maybe, right? But creativity will be with us, right? So 
you know, um, it's not just any sort of design. We, we are talking about design and architecture last, last time, right? We are talking about constructing a um, lot of innovative solutions. It It is not about just functionality, right? You, It's not when you're designing something, it doesn't have to be just about functionality. You can actually give it a little bit of personality and emotion. For that, you need creativity. A machine can keep coming with solutions, right? Functional solutions, a machine can make it, but it cannot put any personality or emotion into that design. So, so something like ethical design? Not ethical design. Ethical design is, uh, you know, when you're designing something, you know that the course of that design is good, right? Okay. So uh, what I'm saying is that, see, let's say uh, a machine can actually design or put a text. I'm saying if you have typed a letter, right? A machine can easily put it to uh, the right order. It will not be able to add a little bit of artistic content into that design. You will not be able to bring in anything uh, that the users will connect to. So, for example, I will give you a small example and I will um, Uber, right? The brand Uber. Yes, sir. Company, right? Right? So, uh, do you know the logo of Uber? Do you remember the logo of the Uber company? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Black and white. Oh, it's just black and white, right? It's just black and white and just a text on top of it called Uber, right? And you can see that every branding which is done on Uber, it's the same line. It's black and white. It's a, So they have stripped out any personality from it. They made it very, 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 very simple so that people can easily understand it. It is a very functional design, but does it have any personality to it? Does it have any emotion which is there in that design? It is not. It is not there, right? Just think about another example. You know m and right? m and Yeah. Yep. Right? Candy, right? Uh, do you remember the logo of that? Yep. Sir, for Cadbury, it's like a slide. Two big M's. M and N, M and N, and N yeah. design, and then M. So there is an amount of connection to that. We actually connect to that logo, right? Wherever we see it, we actually remember oh, any element which actually looks remotely close to m and we think about the whole chocolate and our experiences with it, right? Our, the taste of the chocolate, everything comes to our mind when you see something which is remotely connected to that logo. That's the personality of a logo, right? Uber is, I'm not saying that's a bad idea, but there is no personality to it. The users will not find Uber. Uh, they will not have any sort of brand, uh, you know, what do you say? Um, Connection. Yeah, they will not have any connection to that brand. If there is a new taxi cab company coming the next day, they will immediately go into it. But it will take us some time to say that, you know, we don't want m and we will go to another brand because they have already built that connection, right? So for making that, that connection with people, right? We need to be right? We need to have it. So all of you, I think all of you are excellent designers already, but you need to think of this as well. This is going to be our major asset. This is going to be our major strength. Creativity is going to right, make us or uh, put us in the top of the game, right? You sure, have sir. to work on this as well, right? So uh, with that, I'm going to conclude this uh, speech, this short speech. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, thank you so much for the thought-provoking uh, th thoughts that you know, our learners are very nicely connecting and you know, interacting with you. Thank you so much for taking time and um, uh, you know being part of this uh, uh, event. And thank you so much, sir. We'll stay and connect with you. This is Bunker Jones. And let's move on. Here, I've drew Mahesh Ravi, or the designer that came today in our exhibition. He's a great award-winning designer, isn't he? This is 2019. 